This is the Art of Network Engineering podcast. In this podcast, we'll explore tools, technologies, and talented people. We aim to bring you information that will expand your skill sets and toolbox and share the stories of fellow network engineers. Introducing the Art of Network Engineering Olympics. Tech leads from all over the world will virtually converge for this completely fictitious undertaking. Events include the 6500 toss. The goal is to chuck that chassis as far as you can. Power supplies removed, of course, because we're nuts, but not crazy. Also, this is a tandem event because, well, who really wants to lift that thing on, on their own? Next up is the Typo Titan competition. The winner is the one that can properly type conf T as many times as possible in two minutes without typing coffin T, conf T, or conf. Finally, we want to highlight the Ether Noodle competition. In this event, tech leads will need to remove an Ethernet cable that connects from a patch panel to a switch in the shortest amount of time possible. The small caveat is that the cable is 50 feet long when it only needs to be one and is wrapped around and intertwined through the other 200 cables in the rack. Oh, and by the way, this is a wall mount rack that is eight feet off the ground. Be sure to tune in and cheer on your favorite tech leets in this completely fake extravaganza. In the meantime, check out the art of network engineering. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. That's great. Uh, I, I would I'm a little late for the that, Olympics, uh, so hopefully nobody notices. I, I would give that 6500 chassis toss a try. <laughs> yeah. I, would that sounds like I will let you. <laughs> Can we do it off the top of a building, though? Oh, yeah. Got to have the full effect. <laughs> All right, I am AJ Murray at no blinky blinky. He is Tim Bertino at Tim Bertino. Tim, how are you doing, sir? I'm no longer in my bedroom. I see like that I was last week. I see that. So I'm I'm playing kind of bounce around a little bit, and I think I've found my home now. Maybe we're Landed trying some things, moving the kids around a little bit, and they seem to be happy where they're all at now. So I might finally get to have an office with a door and. Ooh. I'm excited. Very good. Very good. Going to splash some A1 uh, swag on the wall. I see you already uh, started that. Very nice. Yep. I like it. I got I to gotta get some of those fancy light johns you guys got going on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got to get the same ones and then we'll all look like we're in the same studio. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Uh, Dan at Howdy Packet. Dan, how you doing? Hey, AJ. I'm doing great. <clears throat> What's new in Dan's world? Uh, I racked some F5s yesterday, so Ooh. that's new. Uh, Going to do some migrating to newer updated hardware. So Excellent. That's what I got coming down the pipeline. New hardware is always fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Oh, and I get to mess with uh, some AWS. I think it's called EKS, which is like their, their version of Kubernetes. Uh, so okay. some containers. Sure. So yep. that I get to learn some of that. I, I have no clue what I'm doing with that, so this will be a complete learning process. Well, we'll have to hear about your uh, your Kubernetes learning journey. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. That sounds like fun. What about you, AJ? How are you doing? Uh, wrapping up the kitchen renovation, still on vacation. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, yeah, things are going real well. Just minor details now. Uh, we're, we're basically moved back into the kitchen, and it is now a functional space in our home once again, which is nice. But yeah, things are things are going well. Good. So cool. let me ask you this: <clears throat> Have you gone to the uh, to like Home Depot or Lowe's, whatever you got up there? Have you gone at least six times? Uh, probably per day. Yeah. Per day. Okay, <laughs> that's good. And then, have you bled yet? Oh yes, yes I have. Okay, am. so yeah. it's a true project then. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Blood has been shed. Dollar spent. Yeah. Yep. Some tears shed as well. Yep. Yeah. yeah, every day this week, the first thing my wife and I do is just hop in the truck and head to Home Depot or Lowe's. <laughs> yeah. yeah, get what we need for the day because we didn't think about that the day before when we were there. Mm -hmm. God knows why. So while I'm really excited for you and your new kitchen, you really need to learn how to take a vacation because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's it. <laughs> I've stayed off hey. of uh, work stuff this week. I'm pretty proud of that. It's I've Good I've really you. disconnected from work. Which has been nice. Time off work is time off work. That's baby. right. Yeah, that, that is, that's a that's a valid point. Yeah. yeah, that's been fun. 
Excellent. Well, uh, let's jump into some wins. Who's got the goat for me this week? Stand by. I, I, I got <laughs> one. Like, I got one. It's okay. okay. He's, he's got it. Well, I already jumped oh, and got, got it. it. All right. Well, ah, there, we go. there we go. There we go. Uh, uh, Andy's going to let us have it for that one. Yeah. <laughs> Andy's on vacation this week. That's why Andy's not here. Hopefully, he's enjoying some much earned and deserved time off. So, uh, there's some winning for Andy. Um, this week in the winning channel, we've got Gibson. They passed their N plus exam. Congratulations, Gibson. Nice. Good job. Great job. Uh, here's a mouthful. Ill Will passed their ENWLSD. That is the, the Designing Cisco Enterprise Wireless Networks exam. So congratulations, Ill Will. Oh, he's one of those people. <laughs> those wireless, <laughs> people. wireless people. <laughs> uh, Mick Cutie? Mick Cuddy? Past the JNCIA Juno, so congratulations. What'd you call me? <laughs> yeah. That's going to stick. Yep. Yep. Uh, Dan, Dan, is, now, Dan is now my McCutie. <laughs> <laughs> what did he pass? Was it Juno, uh, Juniper? Yeah, the JNCIA yeah. Junos. Yeah. Okay, Congrats. nice. Nice. Yeah. Good job. Uh, Matt D passed the NRC exam, and that completes the CCNP Ooh. for them. So congratulations, Matt. Nice. Oh, nice work, Matt. Now, the NRC, that's the, uh, the routing... The, yeah, the, the Advanced routing. Enterprise Advanced Routing, routing yeah, Services right. exam. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the Traffic Network. Shout out to the Traffic Network. They passed their DevNet Associate exam. Congratulations. Nice. Oh, congrats. Good job. Uh, big personal win for Kaiser Clark. They were promoted to the rank of Staff Sergeant in the Air Force. So congratulations and thank you. Dude. Nice. Very nice. And thank and, you for your uh, service. Well, well, uh, while they were on the episode last week... He finally dropped it in the winning channel, so we got to shout out once again to NetSecWizzy for accepting a position at CDW as an associate consultant. Congratulations, Wizzy! Good job. Uh, welcome to our latest Patreon, Daniel. Thank you for your support of the art of network engineering, and thank you to all of our Patreons. If you're interested in joining the Patreons program, you can go to patreon.com forward slash art of net eng and join there. All right, Tim, can I get another goat scream? <laughs> Excellent. Uh, very excited for our guest this week. Shout out to uh, our friend Carl for the recommendation. Uh, the our former coworkers, as Carl has has moved on. Uh, please welcome Lily Clark to the show. Lily, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, um, where did you and Carl work together? Yeah, so we worked together at INE. So. Um, some of your listeners may be familiar with INE. Oh, I'm um, sure. Are... <laughs> <laughs> Training platform for all things networking, cloud, data science, and cybersecurity. Cool, cool. Nice. And, and uh, what what's your role there at INE? So I actually started in uh, customer support, but currently, um, I guess my title is consumer communication specialist. I work on the marketing team and I, I help out with the social media side of things. Very cool. And so dish the dirt on no, I'm just kidding. You know, <laughs> that's awesome. Very Was he cool. as cool in person <clears throat> to work with as he is in our community? <laughs> um, you know, he is honestly cooler. I, I really liked Carl. Ooh. I really enjoyed working with him. He's just a awesome. genuinely good guy and we all missed him when he left. I can only dream to work with Carl in person one day. <laughs> oh, he's a powerhouse. He's he's Mr. Yeah. Cert himself. I swear, every yeah. every week we're looking, Carl got another certification. Yep. Yeah. Well, enough I don't know about, about Carl. working with him. I don't know about working with him. I think I'd rather have a beer with him. Right? Well, <laughs> right. yeah, that or both at the same time. Yeah. Hey. Hey. <laughs> That's some next level <laughs> stuff there, Mr. Richards. Hey. <laughs> All right. Well, enough about Carl. This isn't Carl's episode. He already had an episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is Lily's episode. So, uh, Lily, um, what what brings you here? Uh, you, so you do marketing and tech at INE currently. Uh, what mm -hmm. else do you have going on? Yeah. So um, I actually started my tech journey when I started at INE in customer okay. support. I really hadn't. I'd never had touched a command line before then. I really didn't know what an IP address was. I didn't really know anything, um, but I 
you happen to be at this great company that had training that started at right. that beginner level. So I took advantage. And um, actually, um, by the time this comes out, the announcement will have been made. I just accepted um, a position as an offensive security consultant. Oh, very nice. congratulations. Con yeah, congrats on that. that wow. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm are really you, excited. <laughs> okay, I was going to say, are you excited? Are you pumped for that? Like, I Yeah, I'm super pumped. So y'all know before my company, my current company knows, but you know, it's fine. That's why <laughs> we're not live. This. My lips are still <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, so I want to take it a little ways back. Is your, mm -hmm. is your background in marketing? No, it's not. Actually, my degree was in exercise science. Okay. Okay. Um, so completely different. Um, mm -hmm. I, I came out of college. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And um, I got a degree in what some people would say um, bartending and sales because, <laughs> I mean, there's what else am I going to do with that? You know, be a personal trainer? I didn't want to do that. So I actually was a bartender for a little bit. And then mm -hmm. I moved to Raleigh and... I um, got a job at Citrix in sales. So okay. that's actually where my career started. So I had a sales background and hated that. <laughs> well, how, do, how, did you, how did you come to find that? How'd you get into that? Yeah, yeah. Right. Like why, um, why Citrix specifically? Honestly, when I moved up to Raleigh, um, all of my friends were in tech sales. And okay. I knew how much money they were making. And I also, look, I was hanging out with these people. They were not the brightest. And I was like, <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> like, oh, oh, I don't need a degree in this. Yeah, I'll let me go try that. So I just applied um, to tech sales positions. And I got okay. my first one at Citrix. Nice. Gotcha. And then so, <clears throat> so let's put some timestamps on this. When, when, like... How many years ago was it that you graduated college? Um, five. So I graduated five. 2016. Okay. So so out of college in 2016, that's when you got your tech cell in Citrix? Right. Well, I, I was bartending for a little bit. I was middle okay. of nowhere, Alabama. I was living with my mama. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, yeah. What part of Alabama? I'm pretty familiar with the northern part of Alabama. Oh yeah, I went to Auburn, so Auburn, we're okay, eagle. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I have to shout it out anytime I can. Um, <laughs> all right, all right. I, I grew up lower Alabama, LA, as some okay. people would call it. Um, but when I say I was bartending middle of nowhere, Alabama, um, I was it was just this lake um, about thirty minutes from Auburn. Um, mm in Salem, Alabama. You've not heard of that. No one has heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I, I just did that and saved up money until I could spread my wings and fly. So um, I, I moved December 2016 and then um, I was working in restaurants up here until I found my position in uh, May of 2017. Okay. So 2017 is when you started it at Citrix then? Yes. Okay. So how long were you there for? <laughs> I was there for five months and then I got laid off. They had a nice, Ooh, huge corporate restructuring. Mm. Um, and let me tell you, I was so happy about it. I hated oh, no. sales. I was, <laughs> well, I was cold calling, making 150 <laughs> dials a day and just Ooh. being screamed at. <laughs> I was so happy to leave y'all. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, so, you know, after that, I believe in December, I got a job at Invisalign as an account manager. Okay. Um, more sales stuff. I didn't learn my lesson. I knew I hated it. <laughs> then um, I I quit that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> About now, five how long were you there, there for? About five, six months. I okay, was not okay. there too long. I, I really should have learned my lesson. <laughs> <laughs> All right. um, and then I kind of laid low for a while. I was like, I, I don't like sales. I don't know what else I'm going to do. I kind of took odd jobs. I worked as a receptionist at a hair salon, which is okay. what? Not anything I thought I would do, but it paid some bills for a little bit of time. And then I was a server at a beer garden and, you know, 
just paying bills. And then I realized I really wanted health care. So <laughs> that's when I started applying for jobs again in the corporate world. And that's when um, I found i and &E, And I started in customer support because I actually applied in sales. And um, my recruiter said, you know, Lily, it doesn't sound like you actually want to do sales. And I was like, you know what? I don't. I don't want to do sales. Is there anything else there? <laughs> Um, and they actually worked with me. <laughs> nice. So that was kind of a weird change of pace. But um, yeah, that's when I started at i &E. It was October 2019. Okay. All right. All right. So, so what does customer support look like at i &E? What's the day to day? Right. So it, it had changed over time because um, i and &E had acquired eLearn Security, which was a lot of their cybersecurity offerings. And um, I was actually client success for eLearn Security. So I was a one woman team. So I did all B2B um, onboarding. I did B2C, when I say B2B, like the business onboarding. I did um, individual tickets, customer support. It was a lot of answering emails, uh, knowing the answer to things. Um, all. And I also, um, since it was a small team, I did all the billing, so refunds. And, oh, wow. Oh, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then, you know, i and &E and eLearn Security merged, and, um, you know, their client success team was a little bit more built out, so I kind of was just doing the customer support side of things, answering calls and uh, emails all day, and... You know, it wasn't my favorite pace, but, you know, during this whole time, I was actually studying in my free time, um, you know, nights and weekends. A lot of my time was just going through our material, you know, in our, mm -hmm. a lot of my questions I would get were, you know, how do I connect to our labs? Um, you know, mm -hmm. in this, in this lab, it says to do this, um, you know, how, how do I do that? You know, and um, it, it was a lot of, learning that for myself. I, I could, um, and I did pass off a lot of inquiries to instructors, but they're so busy. And there are some that I, I just saw so many times that I learned it for myself so I could just help people more directly. Yeah. <laughs> um, and also, you know, I was looking at our courses and, you know, potential salaries for security. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm in customer support right now. I don't know. Looks like an opportunity. <laughs> so <laughs> um, that was a driving factor at first because it was very, very difficult for a long time understanding anything. <laughs> yeah. So just to kind of recap this, you, you were doing customer support, customer success for i and &E. You mm -hmm. were getting bombarded with all these questions. Some of them were, you know, basic, like, how do I access the services that INE provides? And some of them sounded like tech support questions, like, I want to connect to the lab and I can't figure out what to do in the lab. And and so this for you just kind of like uh, scratched your curiosity for technology. And this is where that kind of grew. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, you know, it, it was a lot of different things happening at once. You know, yeah. there was... Um, it, it felt like a perfect storm. Like one, I am a firm believer in lifelong learning, right? So that's why I applied at INE. It was a product I could really get behind. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if I believe in that, you know, I want to learn products. Um, and then also, you know, I'm looking at the salaries potential, <laughs> you know, that I can make. And then I'm also getting those inquiries. But then also, our general manager at the time, he really wanted us to learn this stuff. And he really posed it to me or positioned it to me like everyone was taking this course. And <laughs> he, he was constantly bringing up in meetings like, okay, who's who's gonna get certified first? Who's gonna get certified <laughs> first? Like, w where are my bets? And I'm, I'm so competitive. So I was like, oh, I'm... Ugh. It's gonna be me, right? <laughs> what, I'm what gonna get certified first. Um, so the one I was going for and I got was the EJPT or the eLearn Security Junior Penetration Tester oh, certification. Okay. Right. So uh, that certification, it is a um, 
I guess it's technically multiple choice question. It's, mm-hmm. but it's not. You know, you are given um, an OVPN file, and you know, you have an open lab environment and a fictional company to pen test, and basically, and you're given like a PCAP, and so you know, they tell you go forth, and then you have to answer the questions based off of what you find. Hmm, okay. All right. So I, I had to do a little hands-on to get my certification, so I was really proud of that. Wow. Nice. That's really cool. That, so I mean, that's, that's a big step, honestly. Like, going from, you yeah. know, customer success to evaluating PCAPs, like, that's that's growth. <laughs> that's, yeah. a, that's a major jump right there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and I, I love the, it's a learning curve. I, I love it, the excitement. It it's like, I don't know how long ago you, you got the certification, but the fact that you're just, you're so excited about it just mm-hmm. shows your passion and everything. And I want to highlight as well that we've brought up when we've had others on uh, that there is no one path to get to mm-hmm. where you want to go. If you don't get into tech right away, you don't have to just throw it away and try something else. Right. I mean, the, the different steps you took and where you got to where you are and where you're going, that, that's incredible to me. I, I can't even fathom that. It's been a fun journey. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's hard for me to even look back and make sense of it because, I mean, it, it just feels like just so much growth has happened. And, mm-hmm. you know, obviously, like, I am I'm beginner. You know, I am going in entry level, like, I understand, you know, I'm a skid, as they would say, um, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I'm i just so eager to, like, absorb it all. Like, I'm really excited to start my job and just, like, drink from the fire hose. Yeah. So so you said you got that that one cert, and I say that one cert because I don't remember the, the alphabet of it, but because uh, <laughs> here, on I don't know about the other guys, but I'll speak for myself. Like, I'm not super familiar with all the different security certs, the pen tests, you know, the, I think there's like an E council or EH, is it ECH council or something like that? Uh, EC council, they host the CEH. Yeah, that one. Uh, so <laughs> I, I say I'm familiar with that one, but apparently I'm not. <laughs> I can't even get that one right. So, but uh, so so when you when you listed that one off, I I, w- I wasn't aware of that one. But uh, but that that one's it, it, you said it's a penetration uh, testing one. Is that something that's fun to you? That that hunt? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Okay. I mean, right. Okay. It's you, basically, uh, everybody, like, you gotta go energy. watch the YouTube and see that smile. Yeah. When Dan <laughs> asks that question. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like I mean, you're hacking into stuff, right? Yeah, like you're yeah. an actual hacker. Like I had no idea before starting at INE that there was any connection between hacking and cybersecurity. I, like, I laymen don't know that. You know, I've had to explain that to family members and friends. Like, it's just not a known thing outside of the IT world. Right. Yeah. So the penetration testing. So so walk us through that just a little bit. Like, like what's some of that? What excites you about it, I guess? I, I know you're talking about, like, it's like you're actually hacking into something. That, that kind of excites you. But, uh, you know, like, what's your overall goal with that? Like, what is a penetration test, maybe? Because maybe some of the people that are listening don't know what a penetration test is. So what, what, what is that? Let's start with that. Right. So, gosh, there is a lot of discourse around what is mm-hmm. actually a penetration test and what is actually red teaming and what is actually a vulnerability assessment and all that. Um, so I don't want to misspeak and anger the cybersecurity gods here. <laughs> Just make um, them mad. It don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> but if I were to speak on like offensive security in general, typically mm-hmm. the um, the goal is to find the vulnerabilities in a system and exploit them and then report them back to the company so that they can remediate said vulnerabilities before bad actors get to them. Okay. So, so basically is this you're along pointing the lines out their of like holes. bug bounties and stuff like that? Yeah, so it's, it's very, very similar. I mean, you get your scope um, and you have at it, you try to find the vulnerabilities and report it back to the company. Absolutely. Nice. That's just more... Um, well, I guess not only, but it, it's a lot more web app in bug bounties. Gotcha. I guess it's not okay. purely web app. I don't want to. 
<laughs> misspeak there either. Look, don't don't worry about what you know what they're saying. <laughs> we say stuff on here all the time that's not really hundred yeah. percent accurate. So. <laughs> we try. All right, I'm amongst I just friends. roll with it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> when you were deciding that you wanted to get into cybersecurity, offensive security, what were some of the jobs that you were hoping to get into? Or what were you striving to get into? Right. So actually the the job that I just signed on for was like the goal. Okay. You know, I would, you know, <laughs> I was found from one of my tweets that is so embarrassing. <laughs> Um, it, it said something along the lines of like, remember that time when I told my mom I wanted to be a penetration tester and she started crying and asked me to not tell my family. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and they, so, <laughs> they found you from that tweet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're like, oh, so you want to be a, a, like a pen tester? Like, yes. But you know, maybe different wording. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Something so I, I can tell, tell my, my family, mom. <laughs> right? Um, nice. So, can you walk us through what you're going to be getting into? Oh gosh, I don't even know yet. So, the company I'll be working for is called um, Echelon Risk and Cyber, and they are currently a startup, and they do okay. a, um, a lot of consulting services. Um, you know, red team, blue team, auditing, uh, VC, VC, so services. Um, you know, cybersecurity strategy in general. Their core beliefs are that um, privacy and security are basic human rights, and okay. they carry out their mission by, um, you know, helping their clients with their security needs. So yeah, sure. I'm going to be entry level, kind of all hands on deck, um, but primarily in the offensive space. Gotcha. Now, let me ask this. You said red team, blue team. Can you can you kind of describe what is red team and what is blue team? Uh, happily, I guess the, the easiest way to say it is um, red team is the attack and blue team is the defense. So um, if I, I'm doing red team, I'm, I'm doing more of the offensive side of things. So, you know, you're hacking, you're trying to get into places, you know, physical security, um, see if I can just walk through, maybe use my charm and get through. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, whereas blue team is, you know, sitting in a sock, um, you know, seeing threats come in. And um, again, I, I don't want to misspeak. There's so much more to it, but it's more the def defending side. Mm, I got you. For, from your perspective, do you think there's a lot of crossover there? Do you think a lot of people that primarily do blue team work try to their hand at red team stuff as well or do people kind of specialize what do you what have you seen so i have seen time and time again people make the recommendation or they, they say you know the best blue teamers no red team the best red teamers no blue team mm, um okay. just having an understanding of the other mindset is going to make you so much better if i mm -hmm. understand what the blue team's looking for i can evade that better if i understand um what an attacker is thinking as a defender, like I, I can, you know, better protect. Be, yeah. yeah, yeah, protect for that exactly. Yeah. So, so what you're saying, <clears throat> but what I'm hearing though is, when you were given the opportunity of a blue pill and a red pill, you took the red pill. <laughs> 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 nice. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, me personally, I think the red team sounds a little bit more exciting, but. Uh, I mean, it's definitely a sexier side of things, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I, I don't know. And I, I've listened, um, you know, to different accounts of, um, you know, female red teamers and hearing them like for you know, social engineering and uh, physical um, pen testing, like using like um, a fake baby bump. And, you know, mm, okay. using pregnancy brain as an excuse for not knowing certain answers. Oh, and wow. Like, oh, okay. I, got <laughs> they, I like, use I that one all that. the time. <laughs> <laughs> they, right. they see my beard and they don't let me in to put most places. So. <laughs> so do you, do you think you're going to uh, get into the, the physical on site kind of thing as well versus just the, the virtual red teaming? 
That's a goal. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Nice. That, so uh, if you see, see her I, at any of your places, yeah. <laughs> don't let her in. <laughs> don't oh, let I'm her just in. there to be friends. We're just <laughs> hanging out. Just let me through. Just show me what if, you're working if, with. <laughs> if she if she's in the parking lot and she accidentally drops her purse and all these USB drives fall out, you know, don't pick them up. <laughs> Leave them there. <laughs> see, I, I don't know if it's just my personality, but I would... I would always be so afraid and so conscious that I'm going to cross that line or I'm going to do something that, that is because it, it's red teaming. You're there. Uh, you're there for a reason. You're there by permission of your client, but depending on what happens, I mean, certain things are still illegal. So I, I man, that, that would freak me out. I would have a hard time. Uh, right, don't worry, okay. Tim. They, they signed that line, you know, so <laughs> it's all good. I, I'm excited to learn the the intricacies there and uh know where that line is because you know as far as i'm concerned it's not unethical by any means if you have that permission mm -hmm. and if you have that permission like it's kind of like an act you know you're like i am paid to perform <laughs> so <laughs> you're an actress now <laughs> the world is my theater you know <laughs> i love it nice I, I've worked yeah, at companies I mean, that have done similar type engagements as part of like a PCI compliance. And I remember, you know, we, we had meetings with um, an offensive attacker or a, an offensive security specialist. And it, the, the senior sysadmin at the time just basically said, like, look, if you find something that could cripple us, don't cripple us. Just, you know, report it. You know, we, we are a functioning mm -hmm. business. There are certain things that, you know, we, we kind of drew the line in the sand that like we want to be aware of these vulnerabilities uh, you don't have to show us that they actually exist. Just, you know, kind of document it and we'll take care of it on the backside. And, you know, for the most part, they agreed to that. Um, I do recall that they, they did cripple one of our servers and, you know, I could go in the logs and I could see exactly what they were trying to do. And it was just taking mm -hmm. the service down and it was like something our engineering team used. And it's like, stop. <laughs> <laughs> it but yeah, it, like was, it was switch. interesting just to see that, that kind of stuff and work and work with those folks. Yeah, we, we had a company that they performed a pen test on our systems, you know, and um, <clears throat> one of their questions was like, hey, are you are you guys OK if we do a physical, you know, we come in and try to actually get in your building, get to areas that we're not supposed to. And we said, yeah. And then their next question was, do you guys have armed guards? <laughs> we're like, yeah, we do. <laughs> it was like, OK, never mind. We're not doing that one. Then. <laughs> so. That's great. terrifying. <laughs> it sounds like an incredible opportunity. I'm yeah, just I so mean, excited. I, yeah. I just think of like, you know, James Bond or, you know, something like that. Like, <laughs> it's, you know, a, a spy or something. You, you get to go into this place and try to, you know, just get into their environment, get it in where you're not supposed to be, that kind of thing. It just, that, that sounds fun, actually. Well, and you got to have multiple skill sets. You got to have yeah. the technical skill sets and then the people engineering as well. So mm -hmm. it's, it's the total package. Yeah, and, and I feel like a lot of people in our field aren't really people people, so. <laughs> <laughs> I am them. <laughs> I am them. Well, that's yeah. where I'm hoping, you know, my, like, sales background will kick in and, you know, all my sales training of, you know, get that social contract, ask for help. Um, you were going to, you're going to be scary out there. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm calling it right now. Yeah. Well, I think I, I've got a very innocent looking face. I'm very unsuspecting. Um it will, it'll be fun. <laughs> that, you know, it'll AJ, I think AJ has a pretty innocent looking face too. I think I'd let him in my data center. Nope. Yep. Nope. <laughs> yeah. We, we used to do stuff like that. So I used to work at a company and we, we would try to elicit our users to screw up and, and use that as like an educational moment. We did annual security training, just, you know, best practices, don't leave your passwords on post-it notes around your desk. And we would always look for stuff like that as we were like helping people. And we pointed out to them like, hey, here's your password to the ERP system. I don't think you should have that there. Uh, and a couple mm -hmm. times a year, we would always drop USB sticks like around the parking lot or leave them in the cafeteria. And um, we, we set them up so that way, if somebody plugged it in and then tried to click on something, it would notify us like right away. And it only happened one time, and it was the president of the company. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
Uh, yeah, that reaction. That was yep. good. It was great. <laughs> it was great. And, and we put stuff in there that like really tried to elicit people to click on it, like layoff list and budget cuts and. <laughs> Yeah, so actually, this is you're bringing up a good point here. So I've noticed in my, like at where I work, um, when we do like security training and that kind of thing, uh, or at least when we do tests, right? Like, so we do some kind of phishing test or, you know, whatever you want to, whatever you want to test, right? Well, it lets people know, or it lets the security team know at least, you know, who failed. <laughs> and, and those people have to take security training for that. And when we first started that it people got really butt hurt about it like <laughs> major because because <laughs> it was calling them out you know like it, it, like hey we noticed you tried to put your you know domain account in like 30 times <laughs> on this link like you know, what are you doing and uh so <clears throat> there was some kickback on that like when when we started doing some of those testing um so lily it you're, you're going to be a consultant. Are you, is that include you teaching? Like doing some training or anything like that? I don't Do you know. know. It might, um, you know, if it comes down to, you know, doing some training security awareness, I'd be more than happy to. I think I can speak to people as a real person, as yeah. like, you know, mm-hmm. a non-technical person. Non-robot. Um, <laughs> right. Well, I mean, there's there's that, you know, calling out the people who did bad, but there's also the rewarding the people that did well. So um, I find that personally, I find that I respond very well to praise <laughs> as opposed to, um, you know, scolding or whatever. So yeah. I don't know. I, I wonder if I wonder if there are studies on that <laughs> for security <laughs> training. <laughs> Probably not, but <laughs> would be would be interesting. Yeah. So, what kind of team are you going into? Is it is it a good size or just a few people? It's just a few people. I am mm. I'm pretty excited about it. It's definitely going to be the smallest company I've ever worked for. Um, it's startup for sure. It's been around for I believe like five months now. Oh wow! Um, wow. Okay. And if I recall correctly, I'd be employee number nine. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, wow. no, I'm so excited. You'll, you'll have that really with cool. you forever. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I love like building a team. I get very like attached to my companies and I know you're not supposed to, but I, I like, I just do, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you know, if you've seen me anywhere on socials, like I am like a brand champion for I and E and I know I'll, I'll do the same for the next. It's how I was. I worked at Invisalign for a little bit. I was, like that there i just i go all in (laughs) so um i'm really excited to you know help start this up and just get it out there yeah that's awesome so are you guys going to be like like where will you be servicing at like in in north carolina or um I, the headquarters is in Pittsburgh. I will oh, okay. be remote. Um gotcha. my manager actually happens to live in Raleigh as well. So that's just a coincidence. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. Um I know. How cool, right? <laughs> Cuz you know, they've got offices in like, Pittsburgh and Austin, but you know, we're like, okay, well we're in Raleigh, so <laughs> cool. Um you know, once COVID dies down, travel will likely be involved so it, it's not just one area it'll it, it'll be a national ordeal gotcha well that'll be good so you've gotten your start you've gotten in the door now what are you like what are some of the technology related things that you think you're going to focus on first learning and gaining more knowledge of i i gotta learn you know a language i gotta learn a language um so I've, I've gotten by so far just knowing tools um, and, you know, I, I reading a little bit of scripting here and there and mm-hmm. using other people's stuff. But I, I really, I got to start some development side of things. Okay. So I've actually spent some time recently learning some uh, C++ basics. Um, so g- kind of so. diving headfirst into that, but I'll, also just like all these other tools in general like i haven't even scratched the surface of you know 
different capabilities and what's out there. So honestly, I'm just going to be devouring anything. <laughs> yeah. So, so you're saying these tools, like what are, what are some of the tools that you use? Them? Right. So, um, you know, your classics, like a, like a burp suite, okay. um, or, you know, obviously Wireshark, just understanding Wireshark, um, uh, mm-hmm. deeper, um, like speaking to a network audience, I gotta <laughs> <laughs> name some of those, um, just exploitation tools in general, like I, I, Metasploit and I was about to say, is Metasploit still a, a thing? Okay. Oh yeah, it's it's <clears throat> definitely still a thing. <laughs> yeah. So now, now is that I'm trying to remember. I used to play around with Kali Linux back in the day, and <laughs> I think it was part of that suite, though, wasn't it? Metasploit. Yeah, um, I think so. I, Maybe I'm not. pretty sure it's already installed on Kali Linux. I okay. mean, everything's installed on Kali Linux and Parrot <laughs> okay. OS. Parrot, if... Yeah, yeah. Now I've heard Parrot is better than Kali Linux. Is that true? Do you know? I guess. I mean, I like the colors better, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. <laughs> it, it, they're both Debian based, like pen testing OSs. Like okay, tomato, tomato. It's, right. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> I hear you. I, I typically just, you know, if I'm just gonna download one real quick, it's probably gonna be Cali, okay. um, just because I feel like I've downloaded it like a billion times at this point. <laughs> yeah. Um. But I like Parrot as well. I don't really have a preference. I guess I do, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Offensive security has done a great job with that. So, so yeah. So, so let's talk about that just a little bit further. So, like Parrot and Kali Linux. What what are those? Those what do those tools do? I guess they're kind of like a suite, right? But what, right. what's inside of that? Oh gosh, all kinds of stuff. I mean, I haven't even touched like half of the tools that come pre-installed on those operating systems. Um, they are built for pen testers. So, you know, they have everything from like network security, mm-hmm. web app security, wireless, um, you know, information gathering, post exploitation. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, social engineering. They have the social engineering toolkit on there. Oh, wow. Um, oh, really? Wow. Okay. Yeah. It, it, it's pretty robust. Like, mm-hmm. honestly, just sometimes for fun, like, I'll just go on, I'll just, like, click on a, a tool and just kind of play around with it. <laughs> Let my <laughs> curiosity take over. Right. <laughs> and are those tools still free? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Cool. I mean, there's definitely some that, you know, will cost money, but I feel like they work more on, like, a freemium model. Sure. Sure. Okay. Well, well, we'll throw some links to those in, in our show notes. So if anybody listening wants to check them out, you can check out our show notes and get the download links for, for both of those. Yeah. And go have a chat with Robin Canella in the Discord. He would love to <laughs> oh, talk yeah. all day with you about it. So I do we, want to talk about have a what lot of was... Uh, pounding on Cali in, in the labs and stuff like that. That seems to be a common theme in our Discord community. Yeah. 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 So go what ahead, was Tim. the interview process like for this position? Oh, yeah, there you go. Um, Did you have to hack into a box? <laughs> they, 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 yeah. No. If you can hack so into I this, mean, you'll get a job offer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I, I'll be entry level. So, you know, they know I'm more green technically. Um, so my first interview actually was um, in Vegas at DEF CON. Oh, wow. okay. <laughs> really? Yeah, um, I, I I went to DEF CON. See, I'm completely telling on myself right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I went to DEF CON and I um, was representing INE. Uh, we had a booth there. And, oh um, you know, after my, my duties were done, I, um, I had scheduled an interview <laughs> with my soon-to-be manager um and you know we found like a coffee shop and just chatted for a little bit um you know understood if it was a cultural fit if we vibed if we can work together but also like understanding where i was technically and then also seeing some of like critical thinking skills very cool oh yeah and then i guess that was just like the first one and then i met it's a small team right so then Mm -hmm. i met with like the ceo and you know just trying to trying to vet me i'm sure to see so was it was it all there in Vegas, or did you meet your new manager, and then over time you met with others in different occasions? 
Mm -hmm. Over time, after I came back, I met with others over um, in the age of Zoom, like Zoom calls. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Anything is possible these days, virtually. Yeah. So you you attended DEF CON. Yes. What's that like? (laughs) Oh my gosh. So this year, what? (laughs) It's like, don't get me started. I'm so excited about this. Um, uh, So so for our listeners, before you dive into that, I should have started with this. What is DEF CON? There you yes. go. <laughs> I would say DEF CON is, I believe, the largest hacking convention. Um, it's It's got all these different villages. Um, well, I guess I should say it's during Hacker Summer Camp. So what Hacker Summer Camp is, it's this week this week in Vegas, first week of August, um, where there's a whole bunch of um, security and hacking conventions back to back. You know, you've got typically this year there wasn't besides Las Vegas or um, the Diana Initiative um, that the Diana Initiative came prior and virtually. But, um, you know, then there's you know, VetSec, there's Black Hat and there's DEF CON. This year I attended Black Hat and DEF CON. Um, I actually attended them last year virtually. <laughs> and <laughs> I was in everyone's ear at my company. I was like, send me next year. If we're mm-hmm. going, send me. And like, nice. I was like, I was like, how high up can I go? And how often can I annoy them about this? <laughs> I want to go. <laughs> I will represent the company. I will do what I can. I, <laughs> but. Yeah. I wanted to go so badly. So this year was kind of a strange one because it was hybrid. Um, And there were far fewer people than there are typically. Um, I I believe typically it's like uh, 20, 30,000, you know, something like, yeah, some kind of ridiculous number. And I believe, Mm. I know they capped it at 10,000, but you know, it was it was less than that. I think they mentioned eight oh, somewhere. Wow. It's still a lot um, of people, though. Yes, it was a lot of people. And, you know, coming out of, you know, so much isolation and mm-hmm. not being around people. And you, you did have to show your vaccination card and you had to wear a mask the whole time. Um, you have to wear your mask everywhere in Vegas. But um, um, it, it was... It was still overwhelming, you know. I'm sure there were a lot of other introverts there where I'm like, oh mm-hmm. gosh, I haven't seen this many people in so long. I don't <laughs> know how I can hang. Um, but yeah, no, I don't know. It was just, it was a lot of fun. I worked a lot of it. You know, mm-hmm. I, I had a booth in IoT Village. Um, so what I was doing in IoT Village is I was showing people um some INE cybersecurity labs, and we called it like pen testing 101. So we were helping um, people get the, their first starts in, you know, pen testing hands on. And, you know, we were next to a lot of other really cool people, like actually hacking IoT devices. We were just like kind of there. Um, but <laughs> nice. So cool. I mean, there is like what car hacking village, like right next to mm. us too. And they got like a Tesla in there or something, or <laughs> uh, no, just like normal cars. Um, oh, okay. and they like taught people how that worked. I didn't get to go there, but oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> maybe next year. I didn't get to go to any talks or anything. Okay. Yeah. Um, because I was like working so much of it, but mm. um, no, I. The real treasures were the friendships we made along the way. <laughs> mm-hmm. As is yeah, any um, the connections any you made, right? especially, like, right? <laughs> right. Well, I, I went there. Um, I, I I love the community, like the cybersecurity community in general. And mm-hmm. I, I think that's what really sucked me in um, and kept me going, kept pushing me through. And so it was really just a meetup with all these friends I had made. Um and that, like, I would go back, like, any day just for that, you know. I, I was like, I, I've been, like, following you for so long, and we've been talking, like, <laughs> like typing to each other for, like, a year, and I'm so excited we're finally meeting. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's I kind of had the same reaction whenever me and AJ met. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it was, like... <laughs> started on uh, on Instagram, and here we are. Yeah. Up in Vermont. <laughs> oh, I love that. 
community. It's all about community, guys. Absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. So I, I want to touch on on networking for a little bit and, and to try to understand as uh, an offensive security professional, what level of networking knowledge did you have to like go and get, right? Like I assume, you know, maybe learning about routing protocols is a bit too much, but definitely like the TCP kind of handshake and the communication that goes on there and like knowing that to a really good level is probably pretty important. So what kind of networking knowledge would you do you have and would you recommend to somebody that you know wants to go down the same path you're going on right um so yes you you should under have a basic understanding of like tcp in the three-way handshake and like udp because that helps you with like you know port scanning Mm -hmm. and um you know those types of tools like that um but also you know I, it is important to know, like, at least ARP um, for just in general. I, I don't know. I, I, I have a hard time understanding since I haven't really gotten any kind of networking specific certifications. Mm-hmm. Um, what level is really needed <laughs> and what is considered base level and what's <laughs> further than that? Um, so so do you think, like, uh, going for, uh, forward in your current or your new job, uh, are you going to, are they going to want you to get a network specific or or a network, uh, focused certification or or do you have plans on doing that? Um, just, just curious. Right. I, you know, in in the past I've considered like maybe studying for the CCNA and, Mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. Um, if, if anyone's an INE fan, like I'm a big fan of Keith Bogart and his mm-hmm. um, courses. Yeah. Um, so I I will periodically, like especially if I'm like driving, I'll like put on some like of his like basic <laughs> networking courses and mm-hmm. um, just let it kind of seep in <laughs> as yeah. I'm driving. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know. I I again had considered my my CCNA. Um, I don't. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know new company will want me to learn as much as I can, whether mm-hmm. that will be cert based or not. I'm not sure, but I am positive that um, attaining more networking knowledge will never stop. Um, yeah. You know. Well, so let me ask this: in the certification that you had, the pen testing, do they do they g- cover any kind of like networking technologies or anything like that? Like, uh, yes. or do other offensive um, certs do they cover any kind of like networking or anything like that? Yeah. So the EJPT, that's what I got. Their their accompanying course is called the PTS or the Penetration Testing Student, and okay. that course is actually available in for free like entirely oh. free on the wow. INE starter pass oh, nice. um yeah you just sign up with an account and you get that entire course plus unlimited lab time it's it, nuts so to me oh wow um and the way that that course is broken up is or i guess learning path it's broken up into three courses um one being your prerequisite prerequisite knowledge um and then your prerequisite knowledge Um, skills and programming, and then your penetration testing basics. So in that first course, um, I'm telling you, this is the course that took me freaking forever. I was like banging my head against the table constantly trying to make sense of any of it um, for a very long time before I progressed. Um, But the way that's broken down is it basically teaches you um, you know, some like binary arithmetic and like hexadecimal, like upfront. And then it goes into a networking portion and then a web app portion. Okay. And then you learn. So you do learn um, a lot of networking basics. Okay. Um, you know, like, of course, you, you need to understand IP addressing and like, you know, cedar notation. How do you pronounce that? I've heard it so many different ways, guys. I would say cider. <laughs> yeah. Cider okay. here. <laughs> okay. Cider notation. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then it goes into like, you know, TCP and UDP and some art protocols. And I'm, I'm sure a lot more that I am forgetting off the top of my head since I haven't gone through this course in a little bit. But it does go through that networking basics. Should okay. you gotcha. push to go down that route? 
Well, you can tell I and E that they might see an uptick in that course once this episode drops. <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah, lot of folks in our community that, 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 that are always looking for that next thing. Yeah, I'm yeah. telling you, it, I would just highly recommend it. It is like I literally came from like no no knowledge, and mm. I just use this course that is now free with unlimited lab time crazy again <laughs> and the certification it's hands-on so okay. it's not it's yeah because you said you take a, a capture file and you have to you, i guess you pull some information from that and then that's how, what you start your your uh penetration with mm -hmm. you're given okay. that and what like a letter of engagement from this fictional company and yeah you. pretty much that's that's and it you, you figure you it out it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nice. Very cool. Are, are oh, also, you are given a free retake, which may have come in handy for some of us. <laughs> are, are there any other certifications that you pursued before obtaining this, this position? Um, you know, I started going into like another e-learn security mm -hmm. um, certification, but I things came up this year. Uh, a lot of personal things um and learning wasn't always the top of my or i guess like cert learning wasn't always the top like i was constantly mm -hmm. like reading and like i feel neurotic sometimes i feel like i'm like going crazy if i'm not learning something mm -hmm. um but it wasn't always in that focus, yeah, not always focus um, but i also but... took a um cloud fundamentals uh, okay. certification exam that i am awaiting the results for <laughs> from i and e <laughs> nice right on so learned a little cloud along the way very cool so what what's uh what's next for you then what what cert are you looking for next i don't know man you know <laughs> <laughs> i i've been telling people for the longest time the ewpt which is the e-learn security web app penetration tester okay um but I've found myself like not studying for it at all. And I <laughs> instead have been studying in other courses that INE offers. Um, and I've actually been studying for like the ECPPT word, <laughs> word soup, but that um, e-learn security certified professional penetration tester. Okay. Um, so that's more of like a broad, it, it has the web app, but also has like a, the networking side of things. Um, okay including but i don't know i'm just kind of learning as much as i can i got you that that's such like a key uh i don't know attitude to have if you're going to be in this industry I, I love that about you like you, you're just dedicated to this lifelong learning and if if you're in it and you you feel like you've learned enough boy you are you are in the wrong place yeah. mm -hmm. so i don't I, know how I anyone understand. feels bored <laughs> <ever>. <laughs> So you, you, you mentioned early on uh, when you were doing the, the customer success specialist thing that you were, were eyeballing some salary. So has, has the salary kind of lived up to your expectations? Oh, it's been an increase. Yes. Nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, um, yeah. I mean, you know, there's only so far you can really go client success. And I did switch to marketing in right. um, January of 2021. Yeah. Um, and you know it's 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 been cool being in that position because you know i've learned a lot about social media um mm -hmm. i actually started my twitter um i started tweeting back in like february um so that's been fun like i i don't know it's been pushing me more into the community um but I mean, there's only so far you can go with that too <laughs> <laughs> so um i even as entry level, yes, it's it's a it's a bit of a bump. That's, That's exciting. That's I, I mean, sometimes I, I feel like people do research on salaries and stuff like that. And you're like, oh, I could make two hundred thousand dollars. Well, not not beginner. Yeah. <laughs> Hold up a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's cool that you were able to. You know, it sounds like you took some what is now free training, uh, got some really really good hands on experience that you could speak to in an interview, and you landed a job, and you you got a decent salary bump. That's that's fantastic, and it's the job that you were shooting for. I know. I thought I would. Honestly, I, I didn't think it was entirely possible that I could start off in offensive security. I thought I would, you know, have to start on that defensive side and like work in a sock. And you know, I'm not opposed to that ever. And I I think it's like sure. 
super cool too and I would learn a ton, but you know, it's really even cooler that I just like went to what I wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just, I don't want this to be taken lightly. I mean, 2016 in the grand scheme of things was really not that long ago. No. Mm-hmm. And from yeah. what you were going through in life and, and trying to get things figured out with where you wanted to be and what you wanted to do to where you are now and where you're about to go, that's that's incredible. That, I mean, that's mm-hmm. no time at all. Thank you. I, I'm really excited. I mean, when I even look back at it, like I've only been at i e like a little less than two years since I started on October 2019. So... Um, yeah, it's definitely been a journey. <laughs> yeah, with the pandemic and all that came with that, like, good heavens. I am, I, I'm just proud that I, I didn't quit. I just, like, I would take time off and, like, don't get me wrong. Like, I took extended breaks, mm-hmm. but I was still telling people, like, yeah, I'm still going to do it. Like, just not right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, there's other priorities. Um, I guess, you know, just to share, my mom had like chronic kidney failure and I was her caretaker. So a lot of 2020. So oh, I was wow. spending a lot of time as like a full-time caretaker. Oh my and, gosh. and then in February of this year, my father died and I'm an only child. So I took care of that. So um, it's, it's been like really wild to think of how much I have like accomplished with having a full-time job that is not technical and then also dealing with like family responsibilities as well. So it's it's like it's it's super rewarding. Oh my gosh. I that's incredible. Plus there was kind I, I of mean, a you know, this this pandemic thing that started right around that time. Oh too, yeah. So. I mean <laughs> I was just gonna that say didn't that. complicate anything. That's, oh man. That's incredible. Wow. Yeah, it's it's been fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh, when I tell you, like, <clears throat> we just smile through it. We just smile through it. Put one foot in front of the other. We keep going. <laughs> I, I yeah. love that attitude. That that's it, it's it's not like you got you know frustrated with the content or you just decided to you know not study one day. Like you had some real shit going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. and <laughs> obviously you had to reprioritize and and studying for a certification definitely had to take a backseat for the stuff you were going through. I mean, that's that's incredible. And, and man, my my hats off to you. I don't know that I could have done what you've done fit, having faced everything that you have faced between the pandemic and then uh, the stuff with your parents. What what a journey. My goodness. Definitely. Truly. But it it was at times cybersecurity and like the community was just such a safe, safe space for me. You Mm. know, Um, everyone, at least in the circles I ran in, um, you know, I can't speak for the all of the Internet in that toxic (laughs) waste. But um, (laughs) everyone was really encouraging. And, you know, I wasn't always like sharing what was happening behind the scenes, but people were rooting for each other to succeed and had similar yeah. goals and we're connecting on that and helping each other out. And um, that was always like, I you know, I was like, well, you know what? I'm just gonna go online for a little bit and hang out with my cyber friends. <laughs> and <laughs> um, it made things really easy or easier for me to keep going in that space mm-hmm. um, and to focus on that. And there were times where, you know, you know, I was not very uh, doing very well mentally, but I would find myself really focusing in on like I went through like a old DEF CON um, talk phase where I spent like an entire month just like binging old DEF CON talks oh, wow. and like learning as much as I could in that. Um, so I don't know. It, it was just always like I, I leaned on the community so much. So love the community. <laughs> well on that note let's talk about where can people find you you said you're on twitter what's what's your uh, twitter handle yes i'm sec lil c that's s-e-c-l-i-l-c excellent uh what what other social platforms can we find you on um i am on linkedin that's excellent. lily lily clark um and then also <laughs> I kind of post some memes sometimes to my Instagram, also C at S E C L I L C. Nice. I love it. Um, it's 
I can't believe it. This has been probably one of the fastest hours I've I've been a part of uh, oh, wow. lately. Uh, unfortunately, we do have to start buttoning up the show. Um, do you have any advice for anybody that might be you know wanting to get into offensive security or maybe just the the security profession in general? Absolutely, put yourself out there. Um, you know, don't worry so much what people are thinking, you know, find a platform that works for you, whether that's Twitter, LinkedIn, Discord, um, and just put yourself out there, put your put your wishes out there, put your goals, put what you're studying, what your findings are. Um, the more that you engage, uh, the more the good will come back to you. Oh, I, I love it. I couldn't agree more. I really couldn't mm-hmm. agree more. Uh, guys, any, any uh, parting words of wisdom before before we sign this one off? I just want to say thanks for joining us uh, and recording this. I really think that people hearing this, you're going to help a lot of people uh, that are in similar situations or mm-hmm. are getting to that pivot point where they think they need to find something new. Uh, I think what you said is is really going to help, and I will echo the the uh, community discussion when I started trying to kind of put myself out there, I kept coming back to, well, what do I have to say that's meaningful? And you just had to start. And the amount of people I've met, these guys that we're sitting here talking to now that crazy of them to invite me to come on here and do this, but the amount of people you have, the connections you make, it's an everlasting uh, benefit and you just got to get started. So yeah, I, I will definitely echo that sentiment. Dan, anything you'd like Nothing to add for me? <laughs> <laughs> nah, it, well, Tim's saying everything that I was going to say. So, <laughs> Hey, you took my, uh, my, I'm gonna what, echo, what's, echo. <laughs> you, you took my what's red team versus blue team. I was just getting ready to. Uh, ask okay. That okay. One. All right. We, we traded. Dan me. was in my head. Yeah. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I just literally, I'd say the same thing. Uh, sorry, Tim, Tim, you got a mental image of me there. Um, no, I would say the same thing, like uh, exactly what Lily was saying. Uh, when I started tweeting more and like talking about what I'm working on and stuff like that, it just, it just floods in people, people comment on what you're doing like I would put questions out there. Like I was working on some Python code and I'd put questions and I got so many answers and then, and then I could reply back and be like, wait, what do you mean right here though? And then it just kept going. It was crazy. Like I was not expecting that. And so it helped me on things. Uh, so definitely what she said about putting yourself out there, that's major. Absolutely. Lily, anything else you want to add before we sign off? Uh, yeah, I want to tell a dad joke real quick. Go, oh, please. Oh, here we <laughs> love those here. <laughs> Tim is ready. Tim, get your pen. Yep. pen and paper. The thing is, like, one y'all have probably on. heard so many of these. I, I only have two that I, I like to pull from, but you've probably already said this on here. Uh, why couldn't the lifeguard save the hippie from drowning? I don't think I've heard why this. not? Because he was too far out, man. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's, that's I, good. I do. I do. Now that you say that, Lily, I do have actually an infosec one that I learned just today. Okay. Why did the CISO leave the company? He <laughs> ran somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. Wow. Well, well <laughs> that one took me a second tim i like that <laughs> that's great aj you can cut that one out brother yeah no no we're no no, we're, we're gonna no that was good that's gonna make it back to the intro that's great did you say you had two um i have another um i'm trying to think of like the best way to set this in one up oh yeah did you hear about that superhero with a lisp that had leg day yesterday Nope. No. He's Thor. Oh, uh, <laughs> Nice. Oh, my God. I gosh. can just feel the cringes. <laughs> That's great. That's great. All right. Well, she is Lily Clark. We will put all of her socials in our show notes. We will also put all the additional things that we mentioned here tonight. You know, the Kali Linux, the, the Parrot. Was it Parrot? 
I, mm-hmm. I'd never heard of that until you mentioned it. I'm definitely going to check it out myself. Uh, so we'll definitely add sh- uh, links to the show notes in there as well. Uh, and the free training and certification that you mentioned provided by INE, we will throw that in there as well. So uh, if you're interested in the training that Lily has completed and scored a new job with, you can find that uh, and more in our show notes. Lily, thank you so much for joining us tonight. This has been a real pleasure. Truly, thank you so much for having me on. I had a really good time. Awesome. Well, join us next week for another episode of The Art of Network Engineering. Thanks. Please don't actually try to throw a 6500 off a building. (laughs) Hey, everyone. This is AJ. If you like what you heard today, then make sure you subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcatcher. Smash that bell icon to get notified of all of our future episodes. Also, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. We are at Art of Net Eng. That's Art of N E T E N G. You can also find us on the web at Art of Network Engineering.com, where we post all of our show notes. You can read blog articles from the co hosts and guests, and also a lot more news and info from the networking world. Thanks for listening. <laughs>